This is your host, travel correspondent Tom Wilmer, reporting from Quantico, Virginia. We're at the United States Marine Corps Museum. Please join us as we visit with Mike Miller, the archivist of the United States Marine Corps. Hi, Mike. Hi, how you doing? Welcome to Quantico. Yeah, thank you very much. It's this kind of like coming to Mecca. <laughs> <laughs> well, good to be here. Hope you get a haircut and a tattoo, perhaps outside. The I think that's mandatory in the territory. <laughs> that's it. Tell us a little bit about your mission and what you do and what is most rewarding in your work. We are basically, if you can think of us as the Marine Corps attic. You know, we've all got a place where we stick our cool stuff up there and we want to save it and preserve it. So we serve that mission for the Marine Corps. We have material going back to 1775 and we have current material coming in from Afghanistan and Iraq. Mm -hmm. Everything in between and it's commandants, it's privates, Medal of Honor recipients, bakes, bakers, cooks, all of us, any Marine. Wow, fascinating. So you probably have a big attic. Oh yeah, big attic and we, and we want to build a bigger one. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us, speaking of that, tell us about the National Marine Corps Museum. This is an incredible facility. Oh, I know. When I walk in here, the, I mean, the hair on the back of my neck stands up because it's just it's, it's where you can come to find out what a Marine is, what a Marine does, and what a Marine's done in the past. Give us a visual overview of what is the, oh my gosh, things to see. The striking thing, I think, when you come up to the National Museum is you see this, this angle and what that angle is, the angle of the building, it's the shape of the Marine Corps flag raising on Iwo Jima. The iconic thing that most Americans remember, so when you see that, you automatically recognize that as being Marine. When you come walking up closer and closer, go inside, there's a huge atrium with the Marine Corps aircraft hanging down from the ceiling. There's life-size dioramas there in the atrium. And then you go back into the galleries, and it's just amazing what you see there. Some of the archival things that you have here, I know one is the flag of Iwo Jima. Yeah, the flag of Iwo Jima. There's actually two flags, and we have both of them. Uh, and those are our number one artifacts, I would say. Mm -hmm. We also have other things that, are, that are, we, we put in that cool category for those of us at home, that what we have in our attic. We have the Harry Truman apology letter to the Commandant of the Marine Corps. Most people don't know about that, the President apologizing to the Commandant. That happened to, under Harry Truman's time when he accused the Marine Corps of having a propaganda machine as big as Stalin's. And that came to the public outcry, and they, he had to issue an actual apology on the White House stationery. And then we have a uh, map from 1775 that's is still good today. I mean, it's actually, you can navigate on it even if you have a sextant and the right tools and the sun is right. And we had a tour go through and a Coast Guard officer looked at that map and he says, so I can still navigate with that. And they actually did a drug bust right off of the uh, coast of Yucatan there. So he recognized his spot. Fascinating. Some of the other things, now you have a lot of aircraft here, tanks, just an amazing array of equipment. There's some one-of-a-kind artifacts here including the Amtrak's World War II. I'm sure everyone's watched the Pacific HBO series or will watch it. And some of that gear that you see there, much different than the European theater of World War II, is here on display. The Amtrak's, the tanks, the, the strange and different weapons that the Marine Corps developed for the amphibious war in the Pacific. Going back into the World War I era, also with the, with the uniforms that the Marines wore. But it's a good place to come with your family as well, you know, particularly if you have a Marine relative mm -hmm. that he can come here and, and almost every time the family comes and sometimes it's the first time they've heard the stories of their grandfather or their or their husband talk about what it is to be a Marine and he remembers that that piece of equipment that rifle that tank that Amtrak and you see a lot of bonding going on here in the museum. To take it a step further as kind of a, a mecca Today, I was pointed out to a guy that was on Guadalcanal, who's a docent here, that kids and people can talk to. This is incredible. Well, it's important for us, especially to have the kids come. I mean, this is a place where they need to learn about America's history and all the things that these men sacrificed for and preserve that. You know, sometimes you do surveys out there and how many people have actually heard of Iwo Jima at, in sixth grade is it's astoundingly low. So the sacrifices that were made by these Marines should be remembered. And revered and honored. Yes. Mm -hmm. The sacrifice they made was great. And there's so few of the World War II Marines left by every, every day. So this is a you know, monument essentially to them as well. 
It's a real precious time in history to physically come and visit the Marine Corps Museum because this is going to be the last opportunity for many people to physically talk to people who are combat survivors of World War II. Pretty incredible. That's why coming to work every day for me is like it's like coming on Christmas Day because mm -hmm. you know you don't know what's going to come in through the door as far as a donation or who you're going to meet. It could be a, a Marine ace from World War II, it could be a Marine astronaut, it could be... Well, what was it, five minutes ago you, <laughs> we had uh, something come from outer space yes, right yes. to our front door here? Absolutely. There were some artifacts that were taken up into space and brought back for the museum, so it runs the entire gamut. And most people think of Marines in, as combat, but there's also other, all the other aspects of being a Marine, you know, the humanitarian issues. The Marines, the, the, as colonial infantry at the turn of the century, they went all over the world they have diaries and letters and photographs of China, uh, Hong Kong, Japan, Hawaii that you wouldn't think of finding here, but we have them. In your job, in your time here at Quantico, the aha moment, the most incredible things that have come your way. Doing this since yeah. 1983, and there's so many important uh, memories, but I think one of them would be the sister of John Bazalone from Guadalcanal, the, the Medal of Honor recipient, and the day that she brought in the, the bus that sat in their family home for all those years, she brought her in to donate them to the museum. To look in her eyes and talk about her brother and the family, and then for her to hand me that at that last moment was very poignant for me. That's one of the best, but there are so many. You have a rich and rewarding job, I'll tell you that. Well, you know, talking to the veterans is, is, is I guess, the biggest reward. Being able to, to hear their stories, to preserve their memory, and you know you see tears in their eyes when they bring their material in for us because they know it's going to be saved, so that Americans a hundred years from now, a thousand years from now, will be able to come in and read their letters, what it was like to be a Marine uh, from the, any period, and that's so important for us. We have had the honor and the pleasure of speaking with Mike Miller. This is your host, Tom Wilmer, reporting from the Marine Corps Museum in Quantico, Virginia. Reporting for National Public Radio Affiliates, KCBX serving San Luis Obispo, KSBX serving Santa Barbara County, and KNBX serving Southern Monterey County.